What do you get when you order an Aston Martin off Alibaba? This. Ford Fusion. The car you buy when you don't know what you want, and you sort your results by lowest price first. If your idea of what tea tastes like is Lipton, here's your sedan. Ford Fusion. The official car of slowly adopting your father's personality. Ford Fusion. Brought to you by playing Kino across the street from the courthouse where your elderly husband stands trial on an indecent exposure charge. This episode of RCR is sponsored by Upside. This is an automotive channel. And wherever I go to drive around, it's fun to use the Upside app to see what sort of cashback options are available. I mean, half the time when we're driving around, it's not just filling up our car. It's filling up the gas cans that are in the car. So, right, you may have... Let's say you got you got a 24 gallon fuel tank. Well, now you got another 10 because you got two five gallon ones in the back that you need to put you know octane boost in because 92 is not enough. 92. What am I talking about? 93. And we're buying Wawa coffee for everybody else. So if you find one, especially if you find one that has discount stuff for coffee, I'm buying eight coffees for people. You know, it all adds up. Every year we all pledge to save more and spend less. But how are you supposed to save more when you're playing inflated prices for everyday essentials like gas and groceries? Well, you can't just cut those purchases out of your budget, but you can get cash back from them with Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anybody who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With Upside, I can get cash back on every purchase. You'd be surprised that even local places signed up for this. Now, here we have a 24% Cash back at PJ Willie Hams. We got Polka de Papo with 6%. We have 8 cents cash back here at a Sunoco. 17 cents cash back at this Speedway. 11 cents a gallon at a 7 a.m. 7 Eleven at Perkyoman Valley. A lot of gas stations in this area. That's one thing. You travel outside PA, you don't realize there's a gas station every 500 feet. It's like Turbo Boost for staying on track with your savings goals. To get started, download the free Upside app. Use my promo code RCR to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. After that, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Then pay as usual with your credit or debit card. Follow the steps on the app and get paid. You can cash out anytime to your bank account with PayPal, or, you know, an e-gift card for Amazon or other brands. And in case you're wondering, Upside does not sell your personal information to third parties. They know that your information is a vital part of their trusted relationship with you. Upside users are earning hundreds of dollars a year. And currently, Upside has a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Once again, download the free Upside app and use code RCR to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. The interior fit and finish is so poor, this car won a Streamy Award for Best New Noise Music Band of 2015. Ford Fusion. It's like your mom's pussy. Creaky and big. It's got a turbo. Don't know why. It doesn't feel like it's helping. Is the 87 octane EcoBoost tune that gutless? That the engine needs a turbocharger just to feel not broken? Here we go, let's accelerate! All right, power. Is this a turbo? You can't feel it. Come on, turbo, do something. All right, it's, it's a turbo, I guess. All right, I mean, there we are. We're, we're moving. Yeah. And now it's hunting. It's hunting for a gear. Sport mode. I mean, I guess you could cog tune something like this. Yeah, yeah, I, half second later goes into third. All right, that's not bad. Death is coming, Grandpa. W well, it is. I'm just saying it is. How many more years do you realistically think you have left in you, Grandpa? 20? How many of those 20 years are independent? 10? And you want to buy a modern car? Okay, okay, that's valid. 
Pack as much fun you want into your remaining days. I can get behind that. So what do you want to buy? Corvette C6? Camaro? Supra? Mustang? Oh, you want a sedan. Okay, okay, cool. Like, like an M3? An M5? Ooh, ooh, how about a Chevy SS? That'll be fun. You don't want any of those? You want what? A Ford Fusion? This is what you want as your last car. A Fusion. Yes, your coffee thermos is very nice. It comes with stickers? One sticker for each national park? Oh, okay. So when you go to each park, you put the sticker on the mug. If this is the car you want, you... Yes, we can go to the diner where you can repeat news headlines over your favorite lunch. A bowl of red beet eggs and table salt. Ford Fusion. The trunk is big. And damn it, that's the only nice thing I can say about this Ford. And Ford... I don't say it's a bad car because Ford knows their audience. An American car should have a big trunk. I need to go to lawn and garden and buy mulch. Buy the bag, because that's the good stuff. Now get away, I can lift it myself. There. Now to drive it home and let the bag sit on the side of the driveway all winter. We're out of red beet eggs. Uh-oh. I'm dying from a heart attack while masturbating to a pencil drawing of breasts that I drew myself. G give me my Ford F give my Ford Fusion to my grandson. He's a good boy. Ha! <laughs> Dead. I'm grandson Anthony. I go to the gym and only do bench. My stomach protrudes and I smell bad. I have a girlfriend who is 300 pounds. She comes to the gym and watches me lift. I drive, it's my Ford Fusion Turbo all-wheel drive now. I drive it in manual mode only, keeping the revs high. You have any flour I can buy? I can't get a medical card after the borough tax collector caught me taking a dump in the community day bounce house. Literary theory has taught us a lot in our lives. But one of the more interesting ideas that it gave us was the concept of chronological primitivism. Chronological primitivism. It states that the ideal way of living existed back in the past, out in nature. Before we developed all of these cultural and psychological anxieties that were built around modern civilization and its social order, all these technological and mechanical innovations have only made things worse. Basically, we were all happier when we had nothing. Well, I'm coming to you from the future to say, I know what it's like to have nothing because I have driven a Ford Fusion Titanium. This is a car that was supposed to have features but didn't have jack, and it sucks. It's not as if features were going to do anything but slap a fancy bow on an open surgical cavity. But this car is bad in the way it makes you wonder about the people who made it. Yes, this specific model was manufactured a decade ago. But is it too late to call in a wellness check? Because it makes you wonder what they thought about themselves. And worse, what Ford thought about its customers. And as we saw with the Ford Bronco, Ford knows their customers. 
if you're noticing a trend here, we are very negative on Ford products because we own them. Nick just sold his Mustang. I had a Falcon and now I own a Galaxy. Fords are so well marketed and so beautiful that you tend to forget what's underneath. In Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Jim Carrey complains that he always falls in love with any woman who shows him the least bit of attention. It sounds like an aw shucks moment, but the underlying theme is that the guy doesn't respect himself. He's the type of guy to look at any smiling face and throw critical thinking out the window. He's going to go shopping for used cars, and he's going to filter the search engine from lowest price to highest and buy the best looking one. And please believe, he's not getting past the first page of results, because he's going to find something that pleases his eye and that he can settle for because his uncritical square peg yearns for an unattainable round hole. It looks kind of like an Aston Martin, doesn't it? That's not an accident. It's American. It has an eco boost. It's a turbo. It has the word titanium on it. That's got to do with the build quality, right? And so, like a marriage that starts off with an empty space where mutual respect is supposed to go, you get a Ford Fusion Titanium. And it starts treating you with the same amount of respect with which you treat yourself. Good Christ. It's like a car for someone whose kink is being let down. Now, Nick knows what women mean when they ask a guy if he's in yet. I don't know, I'm gay, but I'm taking his word for it. Because I didn't feel as much as a prick with this engine. The 2 liter EcoBoost inline four GDTI is equipped with a turbo, but it might as well be a kazoo. It feels naturally aspirated. You're supposedly getting 240 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 270 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. Well, that's good but it doesn't feel like that. You get a lethargic six-speed automatic and, well, okay. Here's something that I do like. It auto downshifts going downhill when you tap the brakes a little bit. Okay, that's nice. It's downshifting for me so I don't have to ride the brakes down along Pennsylvania Hill. That's one of the few features this thing has because the previous owners were elderly and they didn't pay an extra $1,200 to get stuff like driver's assist, lane departure, or lane keep assist, or blind spot monitoring. They didn't even want the optional 110 volt outlet. They basically just got remote start and a terrifying dawning awareness that the future arrived without them noticing, and they made no preparations to meet it. They did all of this, and for what? They ended up incurring significant repair bills for everything from the air conditioning clutch to the fuel pressure sensor. This is without even getting into the multiple recalls. It's the worst kind of settling because it's settling from a place of ignorance, of just wanting to have the whole car search over with, not realizing you could have done way better. So you end up with some random piece of Fomoco garbage that satisfied nothing and offers no challenge. This is what happens when Salisbury steak is too flavorful. A Ford starts looking like a digestible meal. And you know Ford chose the word fusion to symbolize bringing two things together to form a cohesive whole. But this car... It feels like someone took a hot dodge all over an Aston Martin and didn't bother to wipe. All this for a rear camera that sometimes just decides not to turn on. Or the navigation that's on an SD card. <laughs> Look at that. And it's a $300 option. As a side note, 
I think seeing cars with SD cards in them for navigation may become uh, a novelty for future generations in the same way that I kind of giggle when I see that DVD reader. That like the DVD ROM of that's what navigation used to be. You just have to spin up it. That was funny. That's funny to me. So maybe in a future generations, this SD card will be like this piece of crap. For an all-wheel drive car, fuel economy is average, not great, not terrible. 22 city, 31 highway, 25 combined. Alex, the owner, is getting 24.8. At first impression, at first visual impression, it looks like a solidly built car. And then you open the hood and notice the two-inch vacuum hose, like the hose for a vacuum cleaner, from the front of the intake manifold to the firewall. And it's clearly not ma made to handle any kind of pressure. I'm kind of guessing this is just kind of like a sound actor or something. You know, like a tube to just pipe some engine noise inside. And back in the 20 teens, the price of this was 32 large. Ugh. Anything would bite me. This car can go kiss the tailpipe of a country without emissions. Nobody should be paying that much money for a car back in the teens for a car sponsored by guys who pump their fist every time they sink a piece of trash into the wastebasket. Ford Fusion, the official car of minimum wage swagger. Because Kunkelman, Chevrolet, Nissan, GMC, SpongeBob, SquarePants, Patrick, Pogo Balls, and Skippets will have you dead to rights for an $812 a month plus interest until your unborn kid is enough to ignore life insurance mailers. I'll say one thing for this poverty spec Dollar General Aston Martin. It moves forward. It moves in reverse. It offers you room as a driver and room in the back for your passengers. It follows the letter of automotive law while failing to live up to any spirit of potential. Ford Fusion Titanium, the official car of malicious compliance. Behold, the American Altima. Just soak in all the gushing praise from teenagers who don't have their license yet. It's a car. The Ford Fusion is a car that's souped up with the audacity of a kid in a Halloween costume with padded muscles. I'm tired of being a law-abiding wimp. I want to make U-turns in front of signs that say you can't. I want to cut across traffic to make the exit when it's less than a quarter mile away and I'm in the fast lane. I want to flip people off and sit in the fast lane after I've already passed the person that I wanted to go around. I want big ultimate energy without having to buy a Nissan. Isn't that right, my similarly named but legally distinct dog, Scoopy Dope? Do you wish you could drive in the left lane and just hang out there for the entirety of your commute? And then cut across two lanes of grad students in Yaris's because you're about to miss your exit? Student loans. Do you wish you could flip off a grandmother of three for daring to go 50 in a 55? Get off the road, Ethel. Do you wish you could ask for? and receive Roadhead. You want to be bold. You want to be fearless. You want your limits to have no limits. You need the f***ing audacity. The audacity. Change lanes. Leave the turn signal on. Take up two spots. If you're at a Whole Foods, take up four and see if the power of whole grains gave Quinoa Kendall enough of a spine to do something about it. The fucking audacity smells like the hope of a more punchable tomorrow, of kicking your neighbor down an endless MC Escher staircase without fear of being sued because anybody who'd willingly live next to you for 15 years should know better than to let coolant leak from his Ford Fusion onto your freshly seeded Kentucky bluegrass. The Audacity is a proprietary blend of vetiver, sandalwood, and road rage sweat. Essential oils? Not on your life. Sandalwood is an essential oil. We use differential oils. To have the Audacity is to remain flammable at all times. See that red light up ahead? Don't you dare coast to it! 
you get over there like it's 1982 Kathleen Turner calling you over for a bit of How's the Weather in Bald Knob, Arkansas. That's a real place. Go first at every four-way stop. Go west on an eastbound one-way street. Never let them know your next move. Turn signals are for apple polishing doormats. And stop worrying about the law. Cops need to remember who pays their salary. Yes, officer, a single bungee cord is plenty to secure this queen-sized Serta mattress to my Honda Fit. In fact, when it comes to securing my load, your wife can fill you in on all the details. Hey, hey! Let go! Hey, let go! Let go of me! I have rights! I have rights! I'm a sovereign citizen! Am I being detained? Am I being de As a free person, I do not recognize the authority of your jurisdiction! Remanded to the custody of the state awaiting trial. Don't let Big Auto tell you how to live your life. Unlock the nerve. The nerve. Unlock the power. Unlock the audacity. The audacity. The Ford Fusion Titanium is the car you get when your father spends an entire lifetime withholding handshakes. You didn't have anybody teaching you the value of self-respect, so you see a turbo and think this is how you'll finally step out from under the shadow of your dad's pile of NASCAR VHS tapes and mustache wax. This is how you'll get him back. Because all he does is talk about how every male in the junkies family served, all the way back to the Confederacy, and you're breaking the tradition. And how maybe you'll deserve a handshake when you come back from a tour of duty. But then, on second thought, he thinks he'd be happier with a folded flag. This review's getting dark, huh? Well, that's the Ford Fusion Titanium. It's a car for a dad that expects the world from you while offering nothing in return. Because it wants north of $32,000, just to feel like you're sitting in the apocalypse's waiting room. Best case scenario, dad doesn't immediately break down at age 60 and goes on to become the neighborhood, come here, grandpa. Neighborhood kids and working citizens walking down the street, having to endure the bony, come hither finger of an old man with an aimless story to tell. Come here, I want to tell you something. These guys. They're not even happy. They want someone to talk to, but all they got, come here, I want to tell you something. They don't know how to smile anymore or get up from their lawn tractor. Come here, I want to tell you something. No, you come here. You're not my commanding officer and you're not ordering me around. Come here, I want to tell you something. I swear to God, my town is full of these assholes. Come here, I want to tell you something. I hate you. God. No one listens to you anymore, do they? So everybody you see who's smaller than you, you gotta go, come here, I wanna tell you something. What is your problem? Oh, you don't get pussy anymore, is it? Come here, I wanna tell you something. You and your Ford Fusions. You're gonna drive that car right into your grave. Come here, I wanna tell you something. I'm not afraid of you. You're fat. Your breath smells. You have no opinions worth sharing. Come here, I wanna tell you something. You won't even turn off your lawnmower when trying to talk to me. Come here, I want to tell you something. Do you have any friends? Come here, I want to tell you something. So all I do is uh-huh and wait for an opening to make a graceful exit. Even though anything in the world, any... Anything with the word grace is more than those jerks deserve. This is it. You have to make very specific choices in life to end up like a come here, I want to tell you something, Grandpa. To wake up every day making the active choice to be today's main character to make everybody listen to you and to project your performing 
and to project your voice across gravel lots and overgrown weeds as if you're performing for an audience at Carnegie Hall and not a bored gas station attendant who's already heard your riveting tale about how you'd have done Iran Contra different or I don't like how they're changing history. In life's choose your own adventure book, I'd keep a thumb on the page where you get the Ford Fusion Titanium before flipping, before flipping to page 75. Because the odds of needing a do-over are even money. If only real life had do-overs. I hate this car. And it's not even like it's all that bad either. It has one redeeming feature out of the other one redeeming features I mentioned. And that's the trunk being cut very low into the bumper. So it's easy to load in big bags of mulch. It has more cargo space than your average crossover. But at this rate, how much difference does that make? If you have a car like this, it's because it's good enough for right now. But it's not something you invest your future in if you're young. It's a stopgap on the way to the next better thing. It's the automotive equivalent of a temp agency. Chronological primitivism would have us believe that having nothing is close to having everything. Well, I'm here to tell you a Ford Fusion Titanium is more nothing than you'll ever be able to handle. So this is 2013. Yeah. In that era before we had connectivity in the car. So how are you gonna make this fancy? Well, instead of having buttons, let's just continue this whole touch screen thing down here onto this panel. Oh, look, you, you just have to tap, but you gotta remember who's buying frickin' fusions. It's just the old Khmer guys. Come here, I want to talk to you. I'm pressing the AC button and nothing's happening, you know, because like for 80 years of his life, if something doesn't work, just press it harder. So he's going to be there shoving his Iwo Jima fingers right into this and then crack. And then try to tell him like, oh, oh, your navigation doesn't work anymore because you got to buy new navigation because this predates, you know, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's on an SD card. And you got, how much are these things? 300, 300 bucks to update your navigation. You know that one mission in every Grand Theft Auto game where before you can have the heist or whatever, one of the NPCs says, okay, so-and-so is on board, but he's only gonna join the team if you can drive well. <laughs> so you gotta have like a race or something, but you don't get to choose the car. This is the car. You start the mission and you're like, damn it. I have to do this race in the fricking Fernando Torrento. <laughs> That's what this is. You just press the gas in this car and it just converts boost pressure into noise and no forward motion. And, and like, even if you do everything perfect in that GTA race, you're still going to only make it back with 1.2 seconds to spare. Like, that's what they have built in. Well, it was close, but he's on board. You did well. <laughs>